when you're creating an SOP, you are literally helping your client or your employer or yourself, if it is your own business, be able to create results over and over again. Hey guys, and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Now, my goal is that after this video is to give you guys clarity on what a standard operating procedure is and how do you make one. Now, if this is your guys' first time on my channel, my name is Lee and Laila Kaba. I have been working from home since I was 15 years old. I'm now 25, running my own outsourcing agency here in the Philippines. And I post videos every Sunday and Thursday on how to work from home. So make sure to hit the subscribe button right there so you don't miss any of my videos. Now, this is a question that as you go into your career, you will probably come across. What is an SOP? What is a standard operating procedure? How do you make one? What is all that? And that is what I'm going to really dive into to this video make sure to watch until the end of this video so I can show you what are the quickest ways of how to create an SOP now first thing is what is an SOP so this is something that if you have been like I said have been working from home for a while or you've had a career for a while creating an SOP is one of the things that is expected from you especially if you are a virtual assistant so an SOP or standing operating procedure is basically and this is going to be the easiest way that I can explain it. Think of it as a recipe to get the same results over and over again. So kind of like how you're always following a recipe if you're making spaghetti, you are creating a standard operating procedure. You're creating a step-by-step -step procedure of how to do certain things to get the same results over and over again. So let's say, for example, within our executive assistant agency, one of the SOPs that we have is how to create an invoice for our clients. And that is a very important one because when the time came that I wasn't the one creating the invoices, someone else could easily do what I was doing myself before. That's basically one way that you can think about an SOP. Another way you can think about it is exactly what I said earlier is it's kind of like creating a recipe. You're writing down step by step what are the ingredients, what's the result, and you're always editing it to make sure that it is up to date. When you're creating an SOP, you are literally helping your client or your employer or yourself, if it is your own business, be able to create results over and over again. That is what a standard operating procedure is for. Now, what is the process? What is the step-by-step -step process of creating your own standard operating procedure? Now, one of the ways that I teach this within our own agency is I always give them these two phrases say what you do and do what you say so what this means say what you do is literally step one of creating an SOP is writing down everything that you have to do for a certain task so let's say that task is email management you're the one managing your clients emails right now you are going to write step by step what you have to do to be able to manage that email every time you open that email address what are the things that you are doing step by step? For example, it could be as simple as just writing down, okay, I log in, I check the labels, I use this template for this situation, or I forward this email when I don't know what to do with it. So you're really saying what you do. Step two is now that you have probably just write out of everything that you are currently doing for that task, you want to then break it down. And the first breakdown is writing down an intro. Now, the introduction of an SOP is basically a way for you to get someone who has no context, has no idea what this is really all about other than the name of the task, give them the clarity of what is the eventual goal. So going back to the example earlier of email management, you're going to say, introduction. This is a document on how to manage the email address of blank, you know, client name. The purpose of this is to be able to make sure that we are filtering the right emails to give to client. You're giving them the clear objective and why this even exists, why this task even exists. Now, after that, after, you know, writing the introduction, the next step now is writing out the tools or what we usually just call what do you need? Do you need a certain login? Do you need a certain database of templates, for example? Or do you need authorization from this person that you are now taking over these tasks? These are the things that you have to keep in mind really when you are creating these SOPs. What are the tools that they would need 
it could be even a physical tool that they will need to be able to get this done. Be as detailed as you can, but not too much. Of course, you don't have to mention that you need a laptop or a really good internet connection. That's kind of a given. But what are the things that they will need access to? What are things that they will need open? So for example, going back to my example earlier of creating an invoice, they would need access to the Canva template that we have for that invoice. They will need access to our website to be able to create the page for the client, for example. So again, just write it all down. What are the tools that they need to get this done? Now, next for step four, you're now going to list down all the steps in chronological order with screenshots. So the reason why you need screenshots with it is so you are making sure that you guys are seeing the same thing because in the future they might update the design of the page so that it might be a whole different system that they have to go through they might have to remake that whole system and you also have to keep in mind that people learn in different ways some people are really image-based learning some people don't learn at all and kind of learn on the fly so you want to make sure that the sop is a complete document that they can follow next after that step five is now creating a video tutorial again people will learn different ways and having a video tutorial at the end is just going to help them be able to make sure that they're doing the right thing. You're just giving them that extra help to make sure that even if you're not available and they're going through the training themselves, they're going to be able to succeed at this. Now, after that, after you've already said what you do, that's the first part, next part is do what you say. This part, you have to make sure you're going back into your document and checking that you are doing every single thing that is said in that document. So what that means is test this, test the actual document, treat it like a checklist. So go through it as if it's the first time that you're reading this document and follow it step by step to see if you are still doing what you said in the document. So this could mean having maybe someone else go through it, someone who has never done it before, be able to go through it. That way you're testing out if this is really a true SOP, if this is really a true documentation of what it is that you do. And then of course, the big part of being able to do what you say is to always Always keep updating the SOP. Keep updating that document as, you know, like I said earlier, the website design changes, as there is a new shortcut that you guys learn, as there's something new that you're doing within that system is being done. It, again, creating an SOP is one of the ways that you can, one, free yourself up because you're not the only person who knows this task. Two, it gives your employer more value with the fact that you are a person who can create SOPs. Not everyone can create SOPs. Not everyone even knows what it is. That's probably why you're on this video, which is why learning the skill and even mastering it is going to be such a huge value for you, especially again, if you are a virtual assistant. Now, even if you are a business owner, creating an SOP is going to be one of the essential ways that your business can run without you. So that's why it is so essential that you guys are learning this. Now, by the way, you might ask, where do I actually put this SOP? That will now depend on your company. Some companies use Google Docs. We use Notion. We used to use our own website before. We just had a private domain. So it's really now up to you where you want to store that as long as it's a place where people can access it within your workplace. Now, if this video helps you guys, make sure to hit that thumbs up button right there and share it with your friends. Now, as for our featured comment for this video, so we have a comment from Dilla on my video of how to avoid online job scams is basically she says I've been thinking of working from home after watching a lot of these videos about it but still hesitant because I don't think I'm really skilled enough I wanted to be a freelance writer like you I've been writing stories poems and songs it's actually where I also got started as well before but I'm not good in grammar or if I use the words right but still I think I'm good at writing because I was once complimented by creating unique stories during high school I'm a college student and I really want to help my family on my school expenses hope you can advise me on what to do thank you. you just really inspired me god bless so dilla richel may again that's literally where i started i started out as a writer i was writing for our high school newspaper i was creating blog posts that's how i got first discovered by the client that i started with and really it honestly just takes a lot of practice if you really want to get better at writing keep writing and now start getting paid for it uh, because then it motivates you to really push yourself so there's a lot of really really good resources out there on how to 
start being a writer online i actually also have a video on how you can get started on being a freelance writer online so please check that out there's a, again there's a ton of resources where you can get started but my best advice for you is start writing and publish it start writing online you could use a platform like medium.com or linkedin.com publish your articles there and then share it on Facebook, share it on Instagram, tell your friends about it because the more that more people know what it is that you're doing, the more that they know that they can recommend it to you. So if you guys want your comment answered in the next video, make sure to comment them below and I'll, I'll eventually get to them. And if you guys still haven't yet, make sure to hit the subscribe button right there so you don't miss any of my videos every Sunday and Thursday on how to work from home. You guys can check out more videos on how to get started with a career online right here, how to have a business online right here, and the latest video right here. And I hope you guys have an awesome day and remember that small steps matters and i'll see you in the next video bye